just, uh, if I could just encourage members, if they're able to, to stay just for a second. I'm going to give the call to the Chief Opposition Whip and Member for Fowler. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I simply want to advise the House that I will not be contesting the next election. And I do point out that Bernadette's sitting up there to make sure I don't recant on this uh, <laughs> decision. I, um, I came here uh, at the Wera by election in 2005, and I've had the privilege of serving this place now for the, uh, the past 16 years. I transferred to the seat of uh, Fowler in 2010, which was a bit of an eye opener because it is the most multicultural uh, seat in the whole country. And, uh, uh, which didn't reflect my background, uh, which was always a bit odd to me as another middle-aged white guy being dropped into a community like that. But I must say that the people of Fowler were very, very kind to me, uh, very, very patient as I learnt and understood uh, the cultures, uh, uh, the customs and traditions of this very, very vibrant community. And I must say, I always have revelled in the uh, colour and vibrance of, of that particular community in southwest Sydney, not to mention the, the comrie delights there that uh, since where were the, I, I did put on 15 kilos, so, <laughs> which probably adds to a few other things that I'll come to. But, um, but uh, my efforts to try and speak uh, Vietnamese uh, as well as Cantonese certainly kept the locals um, entertained. Um, now, I just want to uh, a little bit more seriously to say that I really believe being a member of parliament is not a job. Uh, this is something we do. It is a privilege. It's a privilege to serve. Now, the people in this place, uh, um, regardless of their party affiliations, I really believe they're here for the right reasons, to make a difference for the better in their communities. <coughs> now, sometimes in the rough and tumble of this place, uh, uh, it's easy to be forgotten. But in, in my case, I, I feel I am slowing down. Uh, my, uh, my health issues, uh, regrettably, uh, have been on public display, <laughs> courtesy of colleagues upstairs. Um, and uh, I do require some uh, further uh, procedures which I'll undertake during this break. So I believe it's in the best interest of my community to make way for someone with the energy, the commitment, to continue to champion the needs of Fowler. Now, together with uh, my high school sweetheart, who I married uh, some, I've got to get this right, <laughs> 45 years ago, um, uh, we intend to spend a lot more time uh, in the uh, electorate of Gilmore. So keep up the good work, Fiona. <laughs> now, I note I'll be leaving this place in, in good company. My old mate, Warren Snowden, uh, the member for Lingiari, who, by the way, we will do a motorcycle ride over the snowy mountains this weekend. Uh, <laughs> tempting fate, I know. Uh, 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 Nicole Flint, the member for Boothby, uh, who I've really enjoyed working with over the years as a, a fellow whip and deeply respect her. Uh, my good friend, Kevin Andrews, uh, who I can't see in the house at the moment, but... Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, who we have worked very, very closely over many years, uh, particularly in respect to issues of human rights, uh, which is something uh, coming here has given me the opportunity to pursue those issues as a passion. Now, when I came to this place in 2005, I was asked by a member of the media what were my ambitions. Bear in mind, the initial seat was uh, Gough Whitlam seat of Werriwa. Um, my answer, uh, maybe it was a, a, uh, not exactly what they thought they were going to get, but my, my answer was simply that my ambitions in politics was simply to be, when I leave, to be regarded as a half-decent local member. Well, the jury's still out. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, the verdict's pending. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Leader of the Opposition. Thanks, Mr Speaker.
Chris Hayes, a great bloke, a great Australian and a great true believer. I'm very proud to call the member for Fowler my friend. He has done quite an extraordinary job and he will leave this place with something that uh, I don't think many of us uh, would say, certainly not uh, myself or the Prime Minister, uh, in that he has no enemies either in front of him or behind him. <laughs> he is someone who is uh, well loved across this parliament. And when uh, he had the health issue uh, last year, uh, ably assisted by doctors Freelander and uh, the, and Dr Gillespie, um, around this place, people were just really, really worried about their mate uh, because he's just held in such high respect. And I want to pay tribute to Bernadette as well. He really can be difficult, Bernadette. <laughs> <laughs> Going on a motorbike ride this weekend uh, is um, an interesting, uh, an interesting decision, and uh, I say to the member for Lingari, you have important duties uh, because uh, we're not sure that the member for Hayes has always kept himself as safe as he should. As we know, we had he had a, a, a major accident when coming to Canberra just uh, a short while ago as well. Uh, but he's someone who's absolutely committed uh, to the people of South Western Sydney. Uh, he had that commitment through his work with the police, as well as with the Australian Workers' Union, uh, helping people uh, in need. He uh, took on the job of being the candidate for Werra in a by-election after the former member for Werra uh, somewhat spectacularly left the parliament <laughs> in January 2005. That was a, that was a tough by-election. Uh, Labor had lost the election in 2004 and uh, the, uh, the, the leader of the Labor Party then, uh, Mark Latham, went through a, a difficult time. And the circumstances of that by-election were one that certainly didn't make it a lay-down misere. Uh, he worked very hard and he showed himself to be a great candidate and a great advocate for those people. He then, after a redistribution, moved to Fowler and continued to represent that multicultural, vibrant community in southwestern Sydney. He has been absolutely committed, for example, to making sure that out of Badgerys Creek Airport that there's a maximum uh, job creation of people in his community. Uh, he's fought and campaign very strongly to make sure there's rail access to that community and that it's more than just a, a tarmac, that it's a job generator and an economic growth engine for South Western Sydney. Um, he leaves with goodwill. He leaves at a time of his own choosing. Uh, we all wish him well. The Labor Party will have an appropriate celebration uh, of his contribution uh, down the track. Uh, as uh, Chief Whip, uh, both in government and opposition, uh, his loyalty to Julia Gillard, to Bill Shorten and to myself was just unquestioned. He just always got the job done. The job of a whip in this place is not perhaps understood by everyone outside as well. You have to be a confidant, uh, someone who uh, people go to with issues and a problem solver and do so in a way which requires absolute trust. Chris Hayes has the absolute trust of everyone in this parliament, not just this side. Yeah. And I wish him and Bernadette all the best, uh, including the time they'll spend on the coast uh, in, uh, in Gilmore. And I look forward uh, to uh, his contribution uh, up until the very day, six o'clock, of the next election, because he'll continue to serve that community in South Western Sydney with all the diligence, commitment and principle that he's shown every single day as a member of the House of Representatives. Yeah. The Prime Minister.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> thank uh, the House for the opportunity to, to join with the Leader of the Opposition in paying great tribute uh, to the member for Fowler. Take his keys, Bernadette. <laughs> Take his keys. <laughs> when I first came to this place back in 2007 and we had our induction, I was sitting next to Bernadette at a function upstairs in the members' dining room. Chris was there. And I met them together. And as a new member coming into this place to meet such a wonderful couple who clearly uh, have travelled life's journey together, as you continue to now, was a great encouragement to a young member. Coming to this place, relationships take a terrible toll with the pressures and the demands that come with being a member of parliament. And, Mr Speaker, they are a tremendous team, and I'm sure Member for Fowler would, would join me in saying that. Uh, and she, I'd say, is the driving member of that team, as I think all of our partners and spouses are when it comes to our ability to serve in this place. So I want to, I want to pay tribute first to you, Bernadette, um, for uh, your friendship to so many in this place, particularly the partners and spouses of members of this place. You led the group of uh, partners and spouses, and you were always reaching out to them wherever you could. And you're a, a source of encouragement, and you're a source of, of great friendship to so many, and made people feel incredibly welcome, including um, a young member, a younger member for Cook, when he arrived on that day. And I thank you for your kindness, and to my wife Jenny as well. Uh, but to the member for Fowler specifically, it is true that he has achieved something quite unique in this place. Uh, he is an adornment to this place, and we will, we will miss his presence greatly. We will miss, I think, above all, people who come to this place bring many talents and skills. But the one I think that the member for Fowler brings is he has a great pastoral <coughs> spirit. He, he is someone who looks at another human being and seeks to connect with them as another human being first. He doesn't see anything else. <laughs> Those other things come later, I'm sure. But he connects with people and he establishes that bond of trust, which I have no doubt is why he's been so successful as a local member in his own community. People of many different backgrounds, of which he wouldn't have as much experience or knowledge, but they would quickly see a genuine person in an instant and connect with them very quickly and form a lasting bond as he has with so many, if not all of us, here in this place. He and I share a fraternity as being the sons of police officers, and I want to thank him for his his fraternity on that issue for over many, many years, talking about and addressing these issues in this place. And he kindly wrote to me after my father's passing with a very touching note, and I, I deeply appreciate it at the time. And I thank him for that. He met my father and my brother at a police event once, and uh, he struck up the same rapport there very <laughs> kindly with my father and my brother straight away. And they said to me, gee, he's a good bloke. <laughs> and he indeed is a good bloke. And uh, so it's been a great pleasure to, to know you in this place, and I trust we will see more of you, if not around this place, we bump into each other along, along the way on, on life's journey. Uh, but I am quite certain that I won't bump into you alone, because you'll be there in a coffee shop or in a car or talking to someone or a pub or a game or something like that, and you'll be there with Bernadette, continuing to share life's journey. Thank you for your great service to this House. The Manager of Opposition Business. Chris Hayes, a hard-working MP, a fearless advocate and a dear friend. Uh, today, at a, at a very personal level, I'll say, uh, after many conversations going back and forth over a couple of years, Bernadette, uh, you won the argument. Um, I was on the other side of it the whole way through. Uh, but congratulations. Uh, I want to talk, first of all, about Chris with his advocacy and, secondly, in his role as whip. Uh, and let me just deal with one issue. He's spoken today a lot about the love of his community, but I just want to talk about one other thing. Chris and I share a lot of principles, a lot of values. Uh, one of them, uh, which is shared by most people in this room, uh, is a passionate opposition to capital punishment. Many of us have given speeches about it. Many of us have pleaded for clemency to different embassies. But it takes a particular strength of character to see the extra judicial killings from the Duterte government and to make the speech against it 
in Manila. So that's what Chris did. And each time there's been an Australian on death row, Chris has been involved in the advocacy for clemency. Uh, it's rarely been media work, but it's always been heartfelt, it's always been passionate, and it's been about defending Australians. I also, though, want to talk about his role as whip. Uh, the whip is often explained to the public and to the media as the person who maintains party discipline. Um, and certainly there is a long untold story of one very happy night when we took control of the, the House in the, the second term of this government, uh, where there was an operation run by <laughs> Chris Hayes um, that if it is to be told, it won't be yet. Um, but, but it really was a job well done. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but the thing that's not often told with respect to the whips is what they do in terms of the pastoral care of every member. Uh, and there is not a member on either side of this place who hasn't personally benefited from Chris Hayes, because what always needs to be appreciated, particularly it's the opposition whip that provides leave for their own side and agrees to the leave when it's requested from the other side. Uh, while these speeches have going on, been going on, my phone has been inundated from text, members, text messages from women members of the caucus who have used phrases like these. I could not have been a mum in the parliament were it not for Chris Hayes. Uh, we've had words about the willingness to give leave, about the flexibility, about every logistic being taken care of. And in terms of there are always opportunities that we all have. And most of us are guilty at different times of whenever there's an edge trying to take it. Well, whenever there was a moment for compassion and decency, Chris Hayes has taken it. Uh, different members of parliament inspire different emotions. There's not many of us who inspire universal love from the chamber. Uh, Chris Hayes does. We are better for Chris Hayes having been here. We are poorer for him leaving. Uh, Chris, for everything you've done, thank you so much. Uh, your electorate is better, the party is better, and the parliament is better because you're, you're, you've been one of us. The Deputy Prime Minister. Christopher Patrick Hayes. I can say that without actually referencing his electorate, but I will foul her. But he's a good dealer, sale boy, and he's had his road to Damascus moment. He's coming to regional Australia, and uh, <laughs> it's uh, fantastic that you are. It's fantastic you're going to see the light and spend more time in the country because we need good people in regional Australia, just like you, Chris. But uh, I can well remember, and just picture this: it's a suburban <coughs> cricket ground in Canberra, and and Chris and I were opening the batting against those pesky Fourth Estate, the Press Gallery, and we were as one, and we were as one, and we had a formidable opening partnership. There we were. Chris and I, none for eight after nine overs. <laughs> the member for Hume and the member for Morton were yelling out, run, run. I'm not sure, so sure whether they were yelling to Chris to run me out or me to run Chris out. <laughs> but we batted on, struggled on, I should say, for a few more overs, and then both of us ended up getting out and sharing a moment back at the pavilion. Chris then went out afterwards and wicket kept for the full 40 or so overs. That bloke is a dynamo. He never gives in, and he never lets much past either. But uh, he certainly did when he fell off his motorbike. I can't believe that you're going riding again in regional Australia this weekend. But uh, Bernadette, well, you might have to uh, sort him out, Bernadette. But my wife, Catherine, said to me when she first met Bernadette, she said, "Boy, gee, she's a lovely person." I said, "If you think she's a lovely person, you should meet her husband, because you are a great bloke." The National Party pays every due respect that you need, that you deserve, that you've earned, because you have been a mentor, a friend, a true patriot to all of us. And on behalf of the National Party, we wish you and Bernadette all the very best for the future. The member for Sydney. Um, thank you so much, um, Mr Speaker. This is uh, a speech I never wanted to make because I wanted Chris Hayes to stay our whip and to stay in the parliament, certainly for as long as I was here. I can't imagine the parliament without him. 
Mr Speaker, Chris Hayes, uh, our Chief Whip, described himself as just another middle-aged white guy when he moved to his very multicultural electorate. And I, I've got to say I'm the, the first person to say that Chris Hayes is so much more than that. Um, Chris Hayes is a completely decent person. You, you don't often meet that here in the parliament. You don't even often meet it in the, in the outside world. But Chris Hayes is a completely decent man. And when he moved into his electorate, he makes fun of the fact he had to l learn Vietnamese, learn Cantonese, uh, and that he was very entertaining for his um, constituents. Do you know what I've seen when I have worked with Chris in his electorate and visited his electorate? I, I have seen love and the deepest respect because his community knows that he is a fighter for them, that he will stand up every time and make a case for better education services, better health care. Uh, he'll do the constituent work that is so necessary uh, in a seat that is not only very multicultural but also has pockets of people who are really doing it tough. Uh, everywhere you go with Chris Hayes, he is welcomed with open arms and deep respect. Um, I'm, I'm very uh, pleased that the Leader of Opposition Business uh, mentioned Chris's work against the death penalty quietly, relentlessly, at every opportunity. Chris Hayes has stood up against the death penalty. He has been extraordinarily brave in doing so in the Philippines, um, as the uh, Leader of Opposition uh, Business mentioned. But he's also quietly, um, at his own expense, with no fanfare, visited Australians on death row overseas, not once but many times, again and again, and has been there for them and for their families, offering support uh, and pastoral care uh, literally to the very end. And um, it, takes a, it takes a beautiful man to continue to do that. The things that matter to Chris are uh, family, faith and the Labor Party. And I know Bernadette will be so grateful to see more of him, as will his children and beautiful grandchildren and his mum, uh, who he is so very close to, his brother <laughs> and others. Um, family matters to Chris. And one of the things that is so beautiful about his family is that um, I think they influence his politics as much as he influences theirs. Uh, they've um, uh, sometimes been on my side of the argument, I think it's fair to say, Chris, <laughs> over the years. Um, he is a man of deep faith, uh, deep Catholic faith. It's um, people like the new Pope and Chris Hayes, who actually could slowly draw me back towards the, uh, towards the early years of the way I was raised. Um, but Chris is not a, a man of ostentatious faith. He is a man who is guided every day um, by his deep Catholic faith to offer love, not judgment to others, to offer love, not judgment. And of course, uh, there is his deep love and loyalty to the Australian Labor Party. I know that not being in the parliament won't be um, a, a barrier to Chris's continued involvement in the Australian Labor Party. I know he'll be a Labor man till the day he dies, but we will miss him deeply. Thank you. And the Leader of the House. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Speaker. Well, many fine words have been spoken about Chris Hayes and uh, all deserve it, and I associate myself uh, with the fine speeches that have been made uh, by the previous speakers. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, it wasn't possible to go outside of this building to a restaurant anywhere in Kingston without seeing Chris and Bernadette by his side. In fact, Bernadette, you must have uh, some of the blame to share for the weight that he's put on uh, taking <laughs> to these restaurants and the resulting health condition that he finds himself in that we <laughs> hope he recovers from quickly. But they were never separated. And it's a beautiful partnership and they are interdependent. The love that they have for each other is obvious to all of their friends, no doubt to their family and to their community as well. 
and I think that has enriched uh, each of them over the course of the last 16 years as a spouse, spouse of a parliamentarian to endure the slings and arrows that are inevitable in this job, but uh, for Chris as well to be sustained here. Uh, it's very hard without that support from family and from a partner in the way in which you two have been able to work as one is a wonderful reflection on your faith, but also uh, the people that you are. And I pay tribute to that relationship, which I think has been the underpinning of, Chris, uh, of Chris's success. Mr Speaker, I also want to pay tribute to Chris for the work that he's done, in particular through the Police Federation of Australia, uh, but his time uh, as an advocate for police officers. The Prime Minister spoke very passionately before, uh, no doubt influenced by his father's own service, but of the service of the officers in New South Wales, who will be undertaking gruesome work today. And Chris too was guided by the service of his own father, and it instilled in him values and principles that have served him well in the service of other police officers. And his father would be so incredibly proud of the life that he's led, but the way in which his contribution has resulted not only through the industrial work that he's done in increasing the pay of police officers, and I'm sure they're all grateful for that, uh, but Chris's advocacy has resulted, uh, no doubt, in the saving of lives of police officers as well, in improving workplace conditions and the way in which he's advocated for those officers, I know is something that he's immensely proud of, but all of those of us who have served in this place on both sides uh, as police officers have greatly appreciated, I know, uh, the approaches over a number of years that he's made uh, to provide support to us and the way in which he, to this very day, continues to support uh, the work of the PFA and police around the country uh, is recognised deeply by many. Uh, so, Hazy, I want to say to you, uh, you do share uh, the great adoration of both sides of this chamber. Uh, the public has seen its parliament uh, probably not at its best over the last fortnight, but uh, there are many others in this parliament on both sides uh, who share many of the attributes that you do. There are many fine people in this place, and it is a great calling to answer to serve in this parliament, and you have served this parliament with great distinction which you should be incredibly proud. Certainly we are. We wish you every success, uh, the best of health in retirement, and the many years that you enjoy in retirement will be a product of uh, the decades that you've put into your local community, uh, into your family, uh, and into your life. It's a life uh, that's well led. It's only halfway there. This is not an obituary, of course, that uh, <laughs> often think in these presentations that we make, uh, we're sort of speaking in past tense, but uh, Chris has an enormous amount to contribute yeah. in many forms into the future. Uh, I wish you and Bernadette uh, every continued success. Uh, we'll miss you deeply. The Chief Government Whip. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and uh, thank you for your indulgence. And I'd like to take this opportunity to, to thank the member for Fowler for uh, the work we've been able to do together as, uh, as chief whips on, on either side of this parliament, and, uh, but not only in our role as whips, but in previous roles on committees that we've served together. Uh, I'd like to associate myself with the remarks that have been made uh, by the previous speakers uh, in acknowledging your service, uh, not only in this parliament, uh, Chris, but also in our community over a much longer period of time. And, uh, if that's one thing that uh, I've seen in you over the time that I've got to know you in this place uh, is your willingness to serve our community, uh, but more importantly, the joy you get out of serving our community. And I think that's one thing we can all take away uh, from your example that you've set for all of us, is to enjoy uh, and take joy from the responsibility and the opportunities we've been given to serve our communities. Uh, to Bernadette, I want to thank you as well for your role in leading the uh, Parliamentary Partners Group uh, and, as the Prime Minister outlined, also the welcome that you gave to my wife Judy when she first uh, became part of the Parliamentary Partners and the time you've served together on the committee there. Uh, it is a true partnership. I wish you every success for the future. I look forward to continuing to work with you for the rest of this term, uh, but thank you for your service to this parliament. Uh, and to the community throughout your life. And our final indulgence is to the member for Kingsford Smith. I know many other members will want to 
pay tribute to Chris, but he's stressed he's not leaving the parliament. He'll be here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Thanks, Speaker. Uh, I just wanted to briefly put on the record my thanks for, to Chris Hayes for his friendship over many, many years. I first met Chris in May 1995 when I started with the Australian Workers' Union. Chris was the Assistant National Secretary of the Union. I was a trainee organiser. And despite him holding that lofty office, he always had time for someone like myself who was learning the ropes of the Australian industrial relations system, always popping into the office, seeing how I was going, providing advice. Chris taught me the ins and outs of the arbitration system um, and appearing before the Industrial Relations Commission as it then was. And he taught me the importance of working with workers, but also he importantly taught me the importance of patience. Um, and I think if there's one thing that Chris does represent, it's patience. Uh, he had a very distinguished career, not only with the Australian Workers' Union, but with the Police Association, representing workers and being patient in advocating for better wages and conditions for workers throughout the country and did that very successfully. Uh, I started with the Australian Workers' Union through a program that was organised and run by the ACTU called Organising Works. And there are many on this side of the parliament that have benefited from that traineeship program. When I graduated from that program, we had a little bit of a ceremony that was put on by the ACTU. Uh, I really appreciated the fact that Chris was the only senior union official in the country that turned up to that graduation. And I thought that that spoke volumes about his commitment to the union movement, to workers' rights, but also to imparting his knowledge on future generations. And that's something that I've never forgotten and thank you sincerely for, Chris. Uh, as others have mentioned, we, uh, with Bernadette, it's a partnership. And Bernadette, we pay tribute to you for your role in that partnership. Um, and I particularly want to say on behalf of the many police that love Chris throughout this country, Thank you for your work in advocating for them. I even pass on congratulations and thanks from Randall Meadows from the Arlington Police Association in Texas, who uh, you know is a good friend, and asked me to pass on that congratulations on his behalf. We wish you and Bernadette all the very best. And uh, I'll be brief uh, and just I won't repeat all the tributes to you, Chris, and to Bernadette. They're all very well deserved uh, indeed. I've become good friends with Chris, obviously, in my time as Speaker, particularly. And uh, uh, I was always told that you easily made friends on both sides of the House. And as I, as I said last week, when uh, we had the unveiling of former President of the Senate Stephen Parry's portrait, you were there, I learnt this um, several days after I became Speaker, several years ago, where I needed to bring the President of the Senate on an urgent matter. And, Chris Hayes answered his phone, his mobile phone, and said he can't talk to you right now. We're just uh, dealing with something else. But we've, uh, our officers have worked very closely together. We've worked very closely together, uh, obviously, with um, uh, the chief government whip, particularly through the course of last year, where we had almost daily uh, phone hookups uh, on ensuring we could get the parliament to work and what the arrangements were. As I said, all of the tributes um, uh, are very, very well deserved, and uh, you're a first-class per person in so many respects. But as Speaker, can I say you will be remembered as a first-class parliamentarian in every way, and we wish you the best uh, for the rest of your term. And uh, I know you're staying on in your, in your role as Chief op Opposition Whip, and I'll continue to work with you in that regard. Thank you very much.